Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to work, uh, continue working on our ranch house, and we've got three things that we're going to do to the garage today. One is we're going to talk about water heaters a little bit. We're going to make a kind of a fake water heater back in the back corner. We're going to put the, the garage pad down, the concrete pad and apron. Uh, and finally, we will put on the um, trusses onto the garage. So, Let's get started by just talking about water heaters a little bit. So um, these are uh, water heaters that are typical that you'd see in a garage. Now, um, in a, if a water heater is placed in a garage, it has to be up on a platform. Um, I believe it has to be 18 inches high. Don't quote me on that. Um, but um, the purpose for that is especially with a gas water heater that creates a flame you have if you have are in a garage and there's things like gas cans and paint and paint thinner and stuff like that usually those flammable gases are heavier than air and they sink um so if those gases are are being released in the garage and they sink down um to the level of the floor then there's a potential for those gases to be ignited when when uh, the flame in this water heater goes off. So that is why it has to be up and elevated. Uh, it also has to be strapped. All water heaters in California have to be strapped uh, in order to prevent them from falling over. So technically this would be illegal in California because it's not um, strapped to the wall. Uh, this thing up here, this blue tank um, is a um, is a pressure tank it is for a, it's a, a thermal expansion tank which means that when the water is heating up in the water heater uh, it's going to expand and if it doesn't have any place to go it can damage plumbing so there are some places and codes that require um, this thermal expansion tank to take up that pressure mm -hmm. as the water is being heated um, now, over here, you will also see a pipe that's going down here. It also has to have a pressure relief valve, where if the pressure builds up too, too much, that there's a way for that pressure to escape. Uh, and that is typical. You'll see this where usually um, somewhere there's a pipe on the outside of a house. If it's a single family, normal kind of um, house, you'll see a pipe sticking out of the outside, and that's where that's going to. All right, so we have our gas water heater. You can tell because there's a gas main right there coming into this thing. There are electric water heaters. You can tell that this is electric because it's got its um, its whip is a, for power coming down here. It's usually uh, a 240 volt uh, breaker because it's going to heat up a lot and those heating elements um, suck up a lot of power. And then becoming way more popular now are these tankless water heaters. So the advantage of a tankless water heater is that you're not constantly heating up water. So they're more efficient. They do it um, on demand. So when the water starts flowing through here because you've turned on a fixture in the house to use, white, uh, to use hot water, it will um, heat up that water immediately for, for use. The disadvantage of these is they're a lot more difficult to install. They require venting that's usually different than these kind of water heaters um, and bigger venting. They usually need to be installed by a professional um, instead of a do-it-yourselfer. And um, they are a lot more expensive, but you would hope that in the long run you're using less energy with those. Typical size for a um, normal household of say four people would be a 40 gallon water heater. Um, that's pretty typical. If you get a bigger two story house with four or five bedrooms in it, assuming there's gonna be more people in there, you might get a 50 or even a 60 gallon water heater. Um, but again, as you get bigger, they get less efficient, they get more expensive and they take up more space. So for most households, a 40 gallon water heater is fine for a tank water heater. So here's how I'd like you to mimic the water heater um, is go to the very lower left. There should be a, um, you can expand your tab manager here. And somewhere in there is um, Part Studio One. I don't think I ever asked you to rename it. So you should have a Part Studio One or something that has the very first part of the house that we made. We're gonna double click on that. And there is the original 
foundation and joist, and then we went to an assembly from there. So what I would like you to do is we're gonna kind of make a fakey water heater here. So um, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this bottom footing here of, um, and we'll go up from there. So we're just gonna, um, we're gonna fake it here. So let's um, sketch, so click sketch, and you're gonna click this surface. Make sure it, you're not on, an, make sure you're on the right one, the top of that surface. You'll see a plane and we can again click on the top or end for normal. Now I want to get a dot here in the corner. Actually, I'm not sure if I need it. Let's try making a rectangle and see, oh, I can hook up to that spot anyway. So we're gonna hook up to this spot right here for one corner of the rectangle and come outward. And we're gonna make it 30 by 30, 30 to 30. Now I'm gonna do two extrusions. So it's gonna be a little bit weird. No, I'm gonna take that back. We're gonna do just one. So I want this to be, um, it should be about um, 24 inches up from the bottom of the wall. So if you remember, this one was about 25. So let's go up. Let's just see what happens. Let's extrude. I'm going to extrude that rectangle. I finished the sketch in case you didn't see that. Let's try 30 inches and just see what that looks like. Um, let's try 30, 36 inches. Let's go 40. Yeah, I like that. Let's go 40 inches on that. And that is our platform. Now, it's kind of weird that we didn't really make that out of plywood or whatever that it would normally be made up out of in a house. Um, but it works and it makes sense. So we made a little part. You can make it um, as close to white as you want to. I'm going to rename that part as water, 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 heater, stand. Okay. And then on top of that, we're now going to make our water heater. And we're just going to make a simple cylinder, a simple cylinder. Okay, let's sketch on the top of that. And to make sure that we're going to get in this in the right spot, um, I'm going to make a circle, but I'm going to hover over the side. See how that little square shows up in that dotted line? So I'm going to hover over both the top line where that shows up. And then once you do both, you should get where you can see both of those yellow lines at the same time, which means I'm putting it right in the middle. Click. And we're going to make that 24 inches, which is about the size of the typical water heater. Okay. Finish your sketch. And then let's extrude that about the size of a normal water heater. It's about yeah, five, five and a half feet tall or so. So let's extrude that upward. Um, let's try like um, 68 inches. And that's pretty good. That's going to mimic our, um, our water heater pretty well. All right, good. And make that... Oh, it didn't make it a new part. I think I wanted to make it a new part. I'm going to go back to that extrusion, double click on it. I want to make it a new part. Instead of an added part, I'm going to make it new. Um, I like that blue color, but you can go change it to whatever color you want. And let's rename that to water heater. All right. Okay, cool. Now when we go back to our um, main assembly, so I'm going to go find my way to my main assembly. This house. Then we should have that updated. Oh no! I thought it would update it because it's just a part studio. Uh-oh, we have a problem. Let's see what happens if... Um, I thought it would update that studio because it's not a sub assembly. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to pause the video for a second and see what the deal is. So I thought that because it was a sub assembly, it was not a sub assembly that that would show up, but, um, but evidently that doesn't work. So 
since you did that work, what I'm going to ask you to do then is to um, go ahead and this might be a little silly, but that's okay. Um, go ahead and take uh, an image of your part studio with your water here in there like that and go ahead and submit that. And now we will go back to our our uh, assembly, our main assembly, and go ahead and work on the rest. Now we need to get a little a few measurements in here. So I'm going to measure because I need to know where this pad is going to go. I'm going to measure from here, from this surface to this surface. And that distance is 240. So let's see if that, yeah, that's a distance of 240. Okay, now I need to measure the distance from this surface to that surface. No, it's giving me an area. I don't want that. Let's zoom out. Gotta click out. Let's try that again. I'm gonna measure from that surface to come on, that surface. 224. Okay, so I'm gonna write this down. I got 240, I believe, and 224 D. And I need to know how far, I already remember we measured that was 24 inches. This one was 32 on the outside, but that should make it 28 on the inside. Let's try that 24. So each side is 24. That helps out a little bit. All right, so we are ready to get going with our um, pad. All right, so we're gonna make this separate so we're going to start a new part studio. So create a new part studio. We're going to sketch on the top because that makes the most sense. Actually, I take that back. Let's exit out of there and let's sketch on the right. Hey, P turns off planes and for normal. Let's start at this little guy right here. Now we're going to go make a line that's huge. We're going to go out 20 feet. So we're going to go out um, that inside part, which is 240 inches. Um, no, it's 224 deep. So let's go um, 224. Okay, it's 224. 224. Now this is going to represent the bottom of the garage. You're going to zoom way, way, way out. All right, now we're going to come up on this right part, making sure it's straight. And we're going to come up quite a bit. Let's make this pad, um, let's make it eight inches here, and it's going to slope a little bit. Oops, let's make that eight inches high. Okay. Now, this is going to be a little tricky. Now, I'm doing this so that I have a, um, a way of making a... No, I don't need to do that either. So, let... okay, so we're going to zoom out. Okay, you're watching what I'm doing. I know I'm flailing a little bit here. So we're going to come down here. Now, it's going to be a little weird because that dashed line means that I'm horizontal, but I actually don't want to be horizontal, so I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go sloping, not up or down. I'm going to be lined up with this. So I want that yellow line to show up, but I'm going to be sloped, sloped lower than, um, than that line. So it actually tapers downward. Now we're going to put another line from here to here. Okay. And that is going to be, um, four inches. Now this is maybe a little bit dramatic, but if you ever look in a, in a garage, you will see that the garage um, floor actually slopes. 
when the car is going to be in the rain and comes into the garage or blowing in or whatever, that water's got to be able to get out. So a flat floor might um, have flooding problems, whereas it, the floor is sloped so that that water can get out. All right, so we've got that part going. Now we're going to um, make the part where the uh, garage door goes uh, um, or where the, the slope is going to come down. So let's, and that's going to come down into the, um, into the ground. So we're going to make another couple lines. Let's start on the top. And we're going to, again, not make this horizontal. We're going to slope it down. In fact, um, let's go to where it is. See that dashed line that comes up from that guy? Is we're going to make that click here somewhere. Okay. Now, let's dimension that. We're going to go out another, let's go 16 feet. So I'm going to dimension from here to there. We're going to go 16 times 12. Go 192 inches. Now I'm going to make another line from this bottom part. Again, we don't want it to be straight. Like right now, that's horizontal. I don't want it to be horizontal. Oh, actually, that is showing that it's parallel to that other one. So hover around a little bit. See those two lines that pop up just below my cursor? That means we're being parallel. So let's have that show up and go make your lines close out here. Click. Okay. Now I want my other line to click those two together. And one last thing is we are going to come up here and find vertical. And I'm going to click on that line to make it vertical. Now if yours turned red, just hit escape or undo because you might have accidentally already made that vertical. All right, so then there's our garage pad. Good, we can finish our sketch. We're going to now extrude. Now there's two profiles, so I'm gonna extrude both of them, that one and that one. And we're gonna to go to the width of that, which was 240 inches. Whoops, not 21 for you, that'd be crazy, 240. Now, I'm going to try and remember what I made that color back when we made the, <clears throat> the foundation. So let's rename this as garage pad. It's typically what we call that. And I'm going to try and make it approximately what that... There we go, something like that. It might not match exactly. Um, all right, so we've got our garage pad. Now, um, what I'm gonna need to do is um, make sure we know what the top is, okay? So look at your view cube. This part sloped down. This part is the one that's flat, okay? So I'm gonna sketch on that flat part. All right, now, now that I'm sketching on that and I can click that, that's fine that it's flipped up. If it's not, you can go here. And we're gonna make two rectangles here that are 24 deep. And it's kind of on the that sloping side and we're gonna make it eight inches high. I believe that's what we made the foundation wall. Let me go check that real quick. And then we'll come back to this. I'm going to check that depth. So let's measure and make sure that this depth right here is 8 inches. Yes. Okay, so back to the part studio I was working on. Let's make another rectangle here. Now, if you mess up on this, you might have to go back and fix these. 
and 24 and 8. That's going to be where we fit those into. Okay, whoops. I don't know why we didn't. Oh, it's kind of going into. It's going into this other part, which is fine. I'm going to show you how to deal with this. So we're going to extrude. We're going to extrude that little rectangle. You might have to hover over it a little bit. There we go to find it because it's actually hiding inside of that. And we're going to remove, okay, but we're going to go symmetric. We're going to go, um, um, we're going to go both directions at the same time. And then let's just make it something like, you know, make it something like 20 inches and we can make sure that it's going to go through everything. So again, I removed it. I chose symmetric, so it goes both directions, and we went through all of it. All right, there we go. So now we're ready to install this. So let's rename this as garage pad, and we'll go to our house, and let's install our garage pad. Now it's going to go down into the land, and that's okay. All right, now we're going to have to offset this a little bit. So I don't, I believe that these are sticking up 12 inches, but we'll play around with this until we get it right. So let's insert. I'm going to, the garage pad should show up. You have to expand it and get that part. That's what we want. And I probably am going to have to, uh oh, I think it already went out there and I don't know where it is. There we go. <laughs> Click. I accidentally made two of them. That's all right. I'm going to get rid of one of them. All right, cool. So here's how we're going to do this. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to hover this around. I'm going to do my fast mate down at this bottom corner that I know is flat. It came in. This is the top because this is how I made it. So I'm going to use my fast mate. I'm going to click down here and make sure it's facing out. This is going to be a little tricky, but if you're at this point, you should know what you're doing. I'm going to zoom around. I'm going to kind of find my way. I might even need to look through one of these windows. I'm going to come over into here, and I'm going to click right there on that corner. Okay, see how the blue is facing the way I want it to face? And it's going to be now, right now, it's hovering up in the air. All right, see, it's a little hard to see, but because I accidentally have things a bunch of things highlighted so we need to go down from that um 12 inches so i'm gonna go let's look at the direction i need to go offset I need to go in the y direction is the green one this time and i need to go 12 inches i think let's see how that works and this thing should kind of make its way into the ground Perfect. Everything fits right. If it doesn't fit right, you might need to go back and see if you were in the wrong spot. Cool. Now we have trenches dug out. I'm not going to fill those things in, but now we have a garage pad. Woohoo! Excellent. All right. Last thing is the garage trusses. But before we get to that, if I made a mistake, you made a mistake. And I made a mistake. I meant to cut this whole thing off of here. Um, so, oops, I guess we'll have to fix it. Sorry. Uh, go find the garage pad and we're going to delete it because it won't update as we found out. It won't update those. Let's go back to the garage pad. Let's go back to our last sketch, which was sketch two. And instead of it cutting just eight inches out i wanted it to cut that whole way so what we're going to do is is see this eight we're going to delete it and then we're just going to pull that out like that now we'll, the other side we're going to do the same thing delete it and grab that blue line and pull it out and then hit your check mark and it should remove all of that. That's what I wanted it to, ha to happen. All right, cool. Now let's go install that again. Same thing, 
insert our garage pad. There we go. I'm going to again put my mate down there on the bottom. Blue facing out. Zoom into here and blue facing out. And we're going to offset along the Y 12 inches to place it way better. All right, looking good. All right, so now we've got our pad for the garage to go in. A couple of places to plant plants right here, so we didn't cover that totally. With, and we're looking good. All right, folks, so let's take a picture of your garage pad, throw it in there, and next class we will get into the, um, the trusses.